So recently I bought the cheapest open box 2019 Apple Mac Pro that I could find. I know what you're saying, Apple's terrible, overpriced, but I've been upgrading it myself. This one's sort of like a PC. I think you guys might be a little bit surprised at what value you can actually pull out of a system like this. Let's get started. <music> Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Some say every time you subscribe and smash that like button, Apple gets a little bit closer to nagging away a gamer that hasn't been able to get a GPU, but they can sort of game on the Mac. Now, I know this is gonna be a little bit of a loaded subject. I know that Apple sometimes doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to PC gamers, and it's often rightfully so. They have a very closed off ecosystem. Their systems really aren't meant for gaming, and even if you're an enthusiast in some cases it's really tough if you want to change things a lot of their laptops you can't even upgrade the RAM but having said that traditionally the Mac Pro which is supposed to be their more modular system has been something that's been a little bit fun to tinker with even way back in the original G5 Power Max as well as the original Mac Pro you were able to add cards to your Mac switch out the CPU much like you can do with a PC now of course generally the custom water cooling crowd wasn't really into modifying Macs or anything like that but even some of the earlier you know Macs like the Power Mac G5 it was actually liquid cooled I think one of the last dual processor systems that they had so there's a lot of cool stuff that can actually go on these type of Macs and when the 2019 Mac Pro came out it certainly drew the eye of a lot of maybe these like YouTubers that aren't exactly computer and custom PC type of YouTubers and because of the high cost of some of the systems Systems, it definitely made it seem like a pretty terrible value. Even Linus Tech Tips did a few videos on upgrading the Mac Pro and different things of that nature. Basically, I think the Mac Pro is generally going to be geared towards basically like a, a film studio or a movie house where they're working with a lot of ProRes and things like that. That's why things like the Afterburner card is there, which basically just helps with ProRes and ProRes only, and why they seem to have so much limited availability of other GPUs and things of that nature. So while I love building custom PCs and water-cooled PCs, and I even have a Threadripper system with 3090s in it, I don't think there's a substitute for that type of performance, even maxing out a Mac Pro. I really like the Mac ecosystem in some aspects, and I do like tinkering with the Mac Pro. So I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I picked up a base Mac Pro, but it was an open box around $4,000, as opposed to the $6,000 a base price. And as we know, the specs that you get with that machine are pretty laughable i mean you get like a 256 gigabyte you know nvme drive you only get like a 580x you know pro but it's basically like a 580x and of course you're only going to get an eight core cpu those are all specs that are vastly overpriced for six thousand dollars you can get a comparable pc probably for considerably less if you're just basing it off those specs but you do get a base system with the case and a 1400 watt power supply that has has some build quality that even having an expensive case labs case like where I have my Threadripper build I've really never seen a quality and sort of the modularity and how things insert quite like this so it's certainly very very impressive and of course the motherboard itself is really really cool it has I think up to like 64 PCIe lanes you can certainly put a lot of stuff in here and the GPUs are actually broken down into modules but of course on the base system open box that's the only point really that i felt that it would be sort of worth it to upgrade a system sort of on the third party market on ebay and different things like that because quite clearly if you spec the system out for apple even if you get a refurbished um, one from apple or maybe like an educational or business discount it's still outrageously expensive for pretty much outdated hardware in a lot of cases especially when you compare it to the new stuff like threadripper and the nvidia gpus so you really don't get a very good bang for your buck when you're actually specking it out from Apple but if you upgrade it little by little sort of on your own you can actually put together a fairly competent system for considerably less than if you went with Apple. So let's talk about a few things. First the system is very easy to upgrade. These are the things that I actually ended up upgrading on it. I went on eBay and found some actual 
Apple OEM RAM. Now, if you upgrade the RAM from Apple, it's considerably expensive, but on eBay, I was able to get another 64 gigabytes of RAM, all in eight gigabyte DIMMs, for around $280 for everything. So I already had the 32 gigabytes that the base system came in, so that means that now it's rocking 96 gigabytes of RAM, which is definitely pretty considerable. And to consider, I did that just for $280. Basically what happens is somebody else upgraded the RAM on their higher and Mac Pro and they threw those dims up on eBay basically to try to make up some of the cost and of course it's always so much cheaper doing this and even if you go to like a third party like OWC you can still get the RAM considerably cheaper I just happened to find a really good deal on eBay getting Apple OEM at really a fraction of the cost so the RAM is very easy to upgrade you know on the back panel very very simple I also upgraded the SSD drive comes with a laughably small 256 gigabyte SSD. I upgraded to one terabyte. I think that's really probably the sweet spot between price and performance. Now these hard drives are going to be a lot more expensive than if you got like a one terabyte Samsung Evo, but the way that the T2 chip is on these Mac Pros, you sort of have to have that for a boot drive. You can have other boot drives sort of, you know, happening in your system if you so wish, but I just wanted to stick with the Apple one and it does go all the way up to eight terabytes, but that one of course is also prohibitively expensive. Now, the SSDs were very easy to upgrade. You just sort of pop them in. You do have to do a pairing process with a second Mac in order to get the T2 chip, which is what they use for security and authentication. Now, one of the other most important updates were actually the graphics cards. The base model comes with a 580X, which is very, very slow, especially for rendering and video work, not to mention any gaming that you would try to do. So I went and I got the W5700X. Now, this isn't gonna be Apple's most powerful GPU. They have a Vega 2 and a Vega 2 Duo, but those seem to be based on a much older architecture. At least the W5700X has some newer technology and newer encoders for certain codecs and it's considerably cheaper than something like a Vega 2. And while we wait for the AMD 6000 series GPUs, which were just recently added to the Big Sur 11.4 beta, we have to sort of do with these modules for now, even though I think that AMD 6000 series, like a 6800 or 6900 XT, are gonna be really, really powerful, especially on a Mac system like this. Now, upgrading and installing the GPUs, very simple process. They come in these very heavy, well-built modules that basically just slide right in the Mac Pro and they also work in Windows with boot camp drivers now you can game on them of course but a Mac Pro really is more for some type of production work either with video editing or perhaps with music but overall really nice upgraded experience and compared to the high prices of GPUs you can actually find these in stock from Apple and it's basically around the same price as a regular 5700 XT that at this point if you try to buy it on the secondhand market just because prices have gone up a considerable amount of course in normal times it would be more expensive but you do get 16 gigabytes of vram instead of eight and you also get four thunderbolt ports on the back which definitely for a mac user is going to come in handy now the other major upgrade is going to be the cpu and it's actually one of the simplest uh, things to upgrade you basically just have to take out the you know big heat sink from the front carefully take out the cpu and it's basically a drop in now it was a little bit tricky to find a cpu but I was able to find a Xeon W3265M, the exact same one that Apple will sell at a considerable margin when you, if you build the system to order. I was able to get one fairly cheaply for around like $1,500 to $1,600 on eBay. And of course, I made sure that this is an OEM sort of, you know, retail CPU and not one of the samples or, or one of the engineering samples that they have because those, while they're often cheaper and you can get them probably for, you know, four or $500 cheaper, you can certainly have a lot more problems. They seem to be a lot less stable. So that's why I made sure to go with a, what they call a tray or OEM CPU. At least that way, it's something that's a little bit more legit, especially if you're putting it in a system like this. But the price savings between getting a 24 core CPU yourself, installing it, versus getting it from Apple, along with the RAM. This is gonna be one of the areas where you can literally save thousands of dollars if you upgrade it yourself. And it certainly is really nice having a 24 core CPU versus just an eight core CPU. Now, if you're ordering it from Apple, maybe a lot of people will get the 12 or 16 core because it makes sense. They're priced pretty close to the market. And as you go to the 24 core from Apple, that's when the price difference really, really starts to add up. But what I found on the secondhand market seems like the 
24 core is going to be the best deal because even a 12 core is already between six or seven hundred dollars in terms of the price difference from a 24 core and the 16 core right there in the middle so you're really only talking about a few hundred dollar difference between a 12 and a 24 core while new from apple we're talking about thousands of dollars in differences so here the 24 core actually makes sense because the other ones really aren't that far off and now we're talking about used secondhand market and as long as you get the right cpu that works for you i think it can work perfectly fine even the one i put in actually is getting very similar scores to the 28 core that apple has in terms of all the the benchmarking like you know geekbench 5 and things of that nature so it's scoring very high and perfectly stable so that's really a great upgrade to be able to do on the mac pro now the 28 core while it's interesting and it's technically the fastest one it's definitely more expensive still than the 24 core and that doesn't really make as much sense because you're only getting four more cores and actually the 24 core will also clock higher so it can perform better in certain applications compared to a similar PC. Well, if we take the 24 core Threadripper with one or maybe two 3090s, maybe an equal amount of RAM or even maybe 64 gigabytes of RAM, the actual physical raw power of the Threadripper and PC system considerably more. That Threadripper system will likely be cheaper and wipe the floor performance wise with the Mac. The only caveat here is if you're using certain applications that are specifically optimized for the Mac Pro, like if you're Final Cut Pro user and you don't want to use DaVinci Resolve or anything like that, then of course that's when the Mac Pro is going to be more optimized for that. But in general, I would say that in terms of speed, efficiency, and price, nothing's really going to beat a PC then we're really just talking about sort of if you like working in the Mac sort of system there's definitely a lot of niceties of working like that as opposed to Windows but I found that over time Windows has actually gotten very capable very good very user friendly as well so you can do pretty much anything on Windows that you could on the Mac that's why many pro users switched from the Mac Pro during the last 10 years just because Macs really didn't have the support that pro users needed and as we see on the PC side we have some outrageously powerful hardware something like you know thread rippers and, and even the nvidia gpus that you cannot use on macs at least not on the mac operating system you can still use them in boot camp the amd gpus that are found in the macs while they're decent and capable for the mac applications they're certainly vastly underpowered compared to anything you're going to get on pc so that's definitely a caveat i did this because i'm very curious i like tinkering i want to see what the performance is what apps are most optimized and i do intend to do some more actual benchmarks so you guys see some numbers versus the mac versus the pc this is just more of a general musing about it but overall building in the mac pro if you can call it building and upgrading it's actually a really unique and pleasurable experience of course if it was going to be my only and main system i would definitely go for a pc with a thread ripper and just use you know davinci resolve or whatever other rendering program that you may want to use in general price to performance is definitely there even upgrading the mac on the secondhand market like I did getting everything considerably cheaper even having said that something like a Threadripper system in general is still going to be much more powerful all right guys let me know what you think down below in the future I do plan to do some more benchmarks and some comparisons let me know what you guys would like to see remember to subscribe smash that like button and I'll see you guys on the next video